Hello, and welcome to part one of our uh, Innate Immune Defense Lecture, Chapter 14, uh, in our unit on immunology. The immune system has two basic branches, the innate immune system and the adaptive immune system, and they work together and in conjunction. However, we will uh, learn about them uh, in two very linear manners, in two, uh, two separate ways. Now, the innate immune system reacts to all threats the same way. Uh, it will uh, always do the same thing over and over again, no matter what type of antigen it is, whether it's a virus or a bacterial cell. Uh, it consists of both physical and chemical defenses. Uh, it, it, some of those defenses are carried out by uh, uh, cellular responses, but it is considered an acellular um, uh, immune response. It is the first response in immune reactions. Uh, this will include things like inflammation and fever, uh, phagocytosis, those sorts of things. There is no memory component in the innate immune system, and uh, it will react only against a foreign antigen. Uh, it does not act against uh, self threats or host threats. The adaptive immune system is um, is our secondary defense. It will occur and uh, carry out its activities uh, far, uh, far after the innate system. It consists of both chemical and cellular defenses, and it has a memory component. This is an important difference between the innate and adaptive immune system. There's a strong memory component with the adaptive immune system. And the adaptive immune system will react against both foreign and self threats. You can think of the adaptive immune system as a customized response, and we can't customize the response until we really know what it is and know about it, and that's what the innate immune system will help do for us. The two of them do work together, um, and the innate immune system will activate and uh, uh, enhance the ad adaptive immune system, and once the adaptive immune system is activated and carrying out its, uh, its function, it will also in turn enhance or complement the innate system. So the two of them do kind of feed off of each other in a positive feedback type of manner. An immune response involves events that unfold both locally at the site of an infection and at more distant sites, such as nearby lymph nodes. We can see the integration of the different parts of the immune response if we follow the course of a typical infection. Most pathogens are kept outside of the body by epithelial barriers, such as the epidermis, and are crossed only when there is an injury or tissue damage. After an injury, bacteria cross the epidermis and establish an infection in the underlying tissue. Phagocytic cells in the tissue, such as macrophages and leukocytes, engulf the pathogen. Dendritic cells are also phagocytic and are activated by binding pathogens to leave the site of infection and migrate to a lymph node. The migrating dendritic cells enter the lymphatic vessels and are collected in a draining lymph node. In the lymph node, T cells are activated by antigens presented by the dendritic cells and in turn activate B cells to secrete antibodies. Effector T cells and antibody molecules return to the circulation. They leave the circulation again at the site of infection, where inflammatory mediators have induced changes in the blood vessel endothelium. CD4 T cells activate macrophages to become more cytotoxic, while antibody recruits complement to lyse bacteria directly and to opsonize them, enhancing their uptake by phagocytes. In the case of a viral infection, activated CD8 T cells would kill any infected cells present. So let's talk mainly about the innate immune response. Uh, in the next chapter, we'll get into uh, adaptive responses. But in the innate immune response, uh, we have first and second line defenses. And our first line defenses are really just our physical defenses, and it consists mostly of our skin and mucous membranes. Now, if microorganisms or viruses are capable of getting past the skin and mucous membranes, it then will run into secondary systems known as the sensor systems. The sensor systems include pattern recognition receptors that are found on, um, these are called TLRs, uh, 
We have others that are found in the cytoplasms. These are going to be known as NLRs and RLRs. And then finally, we have a chemical system called the complement system, which is found in blood and tissue fluid. Now, our pattern recognition receptors, these are specific types of cellular receptors. They're, again, are found on lots of different types of cells. And um, these guys have a really important role in activating other types of responses. They are the very early warning system. They recognize uh, pathogen patterns and they will tell, this, tell the body or tell the immune system that something is going on. So they're the very early, early sensors. So these receptors will initiate the inflammatory response, both TLRs, NLRs, and RLRs. Uh, NLRs are primarily uh, inflammatory, TLRs are inflammatory, RLRs are part of what we know as the interferon response, which in our case for this chapter is the viral response. The complement system has three effector functions that we will study. And also these three effector functions, if you think about it, uh, inflammation, opsonization, and membrane attack complexes. Opsonization is enhancement of phagocytosis. So the more phagocytosis that occurs, the more sensor systems we're going to start seeing, right? Phagosomes, uh, we're gonna start seeing more sensor systems activated, greater inflammation and interferon responses. So real quick, just um, an overview of an immune reaction. What is the immune reaction? What are the two branches? Um, which branch of immunity involves a cellular reaction? Which branch um, is responsible for initiating inflammation? Which one has memory? Uh, what is a common effector and func a function of innate immune responses? And what do we consider first or even second line defenses? See you in part two.